Can we be friends now? No, we can't. I'm here for you, if you'll let me be. We had a beautiful marriage, but it's over. And I want you to accept that. So hi, Rosamond, nice hi, to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Uh, so you were saying you were dark-haired in the Oh, yes, film. I'm the one with the dark hair, because we've been travelling all over the world, and at the end of the screenings, you know, I, we stand up, and Paul stands up, and everyone gives a huge round of applause. I stand up, and they think, who's the blonde chick, you know? Um, <laughs> I think I, everyone's sort of scrolling back in their mind, because I'm dark-haired, obviously, and also I spend, you know, a lot of the film in my mid-50s. So I think, you know, there's a problem with the recognition factor. So what was that like, seeing that progression of yourself aging? Well, it's 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 bizarre and quite humbling in a funny way. You know, you you experience that thing that a lot of women have told me about about you know becoming less visible. That tends to be the way people describe it. It's funny, um, and I certainly experienced that. You know, when Miriam, when I was the young Miriam, you know, I felt I could turn heads, and as the older Miriam, I I couldn't. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and what's um, if you could share a story, the most romantic way that you've been pursued? Oh gosh, I mean, I'm I'm quite lucky. I think I I I'm a romantic soul, and I think that sort of attracts sort of quite extreme. I mean, I once did a walk back home through the park, and uh, somebody had gone before me and filled the entire of my path in through one of the London public parks with um, glow sticks. So there was just this sort of glowing um, avenue of of diff multicolored lights in the dark. It was pretty magical. That. Did you wind up with this person or no? <laughs> that's private. <laughs> but that's very romantic. It is, yeah, yeah. What about um, the the uh, the theme behind this film? What do you think it's saying? I don't think we're trying to say too much in a way. I mean, I think it's a film for people to enjoy, recognizing all the chaotic. Should we start that again? <laughs> um, I don't think we're trying to say too much of this film, really. I mean, it's not a film with a big moral point. It, it's a film to be enjoyed, and it's a film that hopefully captures life in all its sort of bumbling chaos that I hope people will recognise their own lives in. You know, it's about love, it's about finding the right person, it's about being true to yourself, but it's about so many other things. It's about friendship, it's about parents and children, it's about truth, trust. <laughs> you know, all, all the good things. But I, I think Mordecai Richler was such a funny writer, um, you know, and such an ironic writer that, you know, to look for great moral points is, is kind of barking up the wrong tree, I think. Also, I was so um, amazed at the journey that the film takes. You don't see that often. And, of course, we come to a topic that's very sad, um, early Alzheimer's. Were you familiar that this existed? And um, did you know about that? Early did, onset Alzheimer's. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I know, I know, and I've read a lot about Alzheimer's, and know that you know it's even being detected to people as young as thirty these days. Um, I mean, Barney, by the time he gets Alzheimer's, is sort of well into his sixties. But um, I, I th again, I think that's a sort of element of the film. But I don't feel it's it's not in any way a film about Alzheimer's. It's a, it's another facet of this man's life, and you know, Barney being Barney, he treats it with you know his irrepressible humour. You know, he's still, he's finding it sort of comic that he's trying to remember things or opening his freezer and wondering why he's put an onion in there and looking rather dubiously at it and, you know, realising that he has lost the keys to his car and then hasn't, has forgotten that he's left it parked at the TV studios, you know. Um, you know, and when Miriam, who's, who's no longer married to him by that point, you know, meets him again when he has got Alzheimer's coming on, you know, he's still able to make jokes and make her laugh and... You know, I think it's there to reveal something about Barney more than the film is. Film, the film's purpose is to talk about Alzheimer's. And your character is mellifluous on the radio. <laughs> yeah. um, did you ever have that kind of experience? Uh, was that fun for you to do? The, to do yeah, that? I love doing radio. I mean, radio is a great pleasure. I do a lot of audio books just for fun, really. Um, because I like using voice to create character, you know. So I was able to do that with Miriam because she was able to have quite a specific, quite rooted, deep voice. And obviously, she's American as well. Yeah. What's an audio book that you've done? I've done most recently. I've done one of the um, 
James Bond novels, which is coming out. There's only one that was narrated by a woman, and they're releasing next year, um, read by people like Bill Nye and Daniel Craig, and they, they've, um, they're doing the whole set of all 20 original Fleming Bond novels. But I've also done, uh, what was the last one I did before that, it was Restless by William Boyd. So <laughs> did you do all the Bond novels? Or? No, there's only one that's narrated by a woman. And what 19, was it's, it's The Spy Who Loved Me. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. What's your next project? Well, I'm just completing work on Johnny English, um, which is a comedy with Rowan Atkinson. So I've been, which is funnily enough, a bit of a Bond spoof, actually. And it's been brilliant. I mean, it's very, very funny script. One of the funniest scripts I've read for a long time. Um, so that still got me, you know, busy through January. Are you playing a Bond girl? No, well, not really. I mean, it's a, you know, they're not, it's not a Bond film, but um, it's a, I play a behavioral psychologist. Who, uh, which allows for kind of, you know, when you're studying a man like Rowan Atkinson, it allows for some humorous exchanges. <laughs> well, looking forward to that. Yeah, Thank, thank you. you. Have I ever given up when it comes to you? Never. So what makes you think I'm going to start now? <laughs> 